And welcome to the Saturday Morning Wake Up Call right here on KFAR. It's local talk radio, but we are streaming live around the world at KFAR660.com. And if you have a smartphone, you can find us by way of the free TuneIn Radio app. Welcome to the show. I'm Steve Floyd, the man with the face made for radio, and I am merely the monkey behind the machine, the real voice of Patriot's Lament and the Saturday Morning Wake Up Call, the Bennett Brothers. Joining us from Far North Tactical, we have Aaron Bennett this morning. Good morning. Special guest. Good morning, Steve. It's good, so good to see you here. So I, I must not, what, you're not working today? Uh, no, I'm going to try and figure that out where I can be here every week. Or, I don't know, I have my accountant going through everything to see if I'm going to be able to keep affording this or not, and so on and so <sighs> forth. So we'll see what the future has. All right. And from... Uh, <laughs> From Big Orange Enterprises, we have Josh Bennett. Good morning, Josh. Good morning. Nice to have you, Aaron. It's like special guest Aaron Bennett today. Yeah, I kind or, of feel like Dave Diesel. Oh, wow. <laughs> Whoa. You, oh, here, put I'm these not, on. I'm not anywhere near that. Uh, yeah, let me wear on, those bro. glasses. That, I look like Dave. That, I feel smarter. Wow. You certainly look smarter. <laughs> How come they don't have that effect on you? Because I'm already as smart as, I, as anyone can get. <laughs> <laughs> well, while I uh, took that time off there, we haven't even seen each other for like two weeks. So it's been it's great, like family reunion. Yep. Best but this, of my life. this time I have had off. Obviously, I've still been active, uh, doing what I do best and fighting with people and working out. Well, cage fights? No. Oh. No, I've been moving and stuff like that and working, trying to be an, a good American taxpayer. But I've done a lot of arguing online with people like I always do, and it seems like that all those conversations always end up going back to people's cop-out as, well, America's the freest place in the world. What's your two reasons for uh, blindly supporting the state of America? Freedom and freedom. And I just, I want to refute some of that. I think that people get caught up in that. They allow a lot of the things, the oppressions of the state just based on, well, if you don't like it, go somewhere else. And that that statement is basically an assumption that they're challenging you to go somewhere that somewhere else that's free, right? You know, that's just, as an aside, amazing that you're talking about that because we literally haven't talked in a long time, right? This is exactly what I wanted to talk about today. Well, good. So Mental... <laughs> I I went to breakfast early this morning. I kind of wrote out a little bit of my argument against that. Um, To make the claim that America is the freest place in the world, or even to say it's the only free place in the world, there's lots of places that claim to have freedom just like ours, and in fact do. Canada, Japan, the UK, France, Italy, Spain, Germany, Australia, Belgium, Chile, that's just naming a few. North Korea. (laughs) There's 207 sovereign states in the world. There's around 207 sovereign states in the world, and 180 out of those 207 claim to have democratic freedom similar to ours. We're not the first in anything. We're seventh in literacy, 27th in math, 22nd in science, 49th in life expectancy, 189th in infant mortality, third in medium household income, fourth in the labor force, and fourth in exports. We're ninth in economic freedoms. Did I say that again? We're ninth I in... Thought we were, I thought we dropped a 13th. Okay, I'm looking up info that's probably a week old. Oh. <laughs> we're, I'll change it. We're 13th in economic freedoms. We're seventh in overall liberties. Not first. We do, in fact, lead the, con- lead the world in two categories. <laughs> Number one... In incarcerated people per capita, we have absolutely, hands down, the most people in prison. We have more people than the top next seven democratic countries, or even communist countries. If you include any country in the world. They have more than China. Yes, more than China and Russia combined. So we do lead the world in one thing. I will give all the, the proponents of America being the greatest that. We're also number one in the largest defense budget in the world. We spend more than the next 26 top countries combined, and 25 of those are our allies. There is no factual evidence to support the claim that America is the most free or the greatest place on Earth. 
I think we're number one in invasions, too. We do lead the world in gun ownership, but that kind of belies a, li- a little bit to the fact of gun ownership. People pretend like we're the only place that you can own them. 179 out of those 207 uh, sovereign countries enjoy gun ownership. Brazil has as many as 17 million firearms estimated, and over 9 million of those are not even registered. Uh, If people don't believe that there's 179 countries that own firearms, I could go down the list that's extremely long. I believe you, Brock. Yemen, Switzerland, Finland, Serbia, Serbia, Cyprus, Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Uruguay, Sweden, Norway, France, Canada, Australia, Germany, Iceland, Oman, Bethlehem, Kuwait, Macedonia. I'll just quit. You know, it's funny. The, you know, we, got, we go over there to free the Middle Eastern countries, and they get to own full auto AK-47s legally. Lawfully, whatever. That's because they're more responsible with them, Josh. No, it's just funny that we always go Wait, there to I, give them. Don't they normally our shoot them up in the air when they're celebrating, you know, weddings and? True, maybe that's what it is. Cultural thing. I mean, it's just funny we have to go over there to liberate them, and yet every single one of them owns a full auto weapon. Well, I think the reason that Americans feel like we're the freest place in the world is for prosperity reasons, and we don't. What Americans fail to understand is we don't lead the world in any type of economic freedoms. What it is, we're living in a generation that's in declining prosperity, but it's prosperity that's left over from our great-great-grandpas, not from what we're currently doing now. We're a generation that defines ourselves by who it voted for in the last election, one that doesn't believe in liberty or rights, but rather in the political process of fighting to ensure privileges. Aaron Fuchs. There it is. You know, it, it's it's interesting that you mentioned that, Aaron, because I, you know, growing up, you, you get you kind of swallow the propaganda to a certain degree that you just because it's in the culture around you. I mean, especially if you're in the public schools, you're taught how we're the freest country in the world. But even if you're not in the public schools, just watching the popular media and going to the sporting events, I mean, we're number one, we're number one, right? You, you know, the chance of USA. Remember going all the way back to the 1980 Winter Olympics when our hockey team beat, oh, yeah. beat the Soviets and just this eruption of national pride and yelling, we're number one, go USA. A lot of what we are, uh, the rhetoric for why we're so, you know, the rhetoric from people that say, we're free, oh, this is the greatest, is the exact same rhetoric you could apply to Nazi Germany. Say 39, 40, even 41. We're in wars, they were in wars. They felt pretty free. I mean, the German person himself, he was he was free to walk around. He had his guns, you know, contrary to what everyone says. They Hitler wasn't Hitler wasn't confiscating their weapons. So basically, they had the same mentality that we do today. They they did have a national registration. A lot of people get caught up on that. They they equate that to him for, Banning, forcibly right. taking them. Uh, that's what our gun bans uh, degraded into is they're they're calling for a national registration instead of a gun control because they're getting a little bit more opposition than they than they thought they were gonna. Just a little, which is good, but. You can use the same arguments. Nazi Germans, or the Germans of Nazi Germany at the time, could use the same, could say the same thing that, that people here say. They did say they the had same economic thing. freedom. They were making cash money. They pulled out of the depression, ultra hyperinflation. If you would have taken a poll in 1940 or 1939 of the average German, they thought they were the freest, greatest people on the planet. Yeah. Huh. Didn't they feel a duty to go and liberate some of the other countries in there? Oh, they felt the duty to liberate Austria. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they sure did. And the uh, I'm not thinking totally here. The northeastern, northwestern section of Poland. What was that? The uh, there were Germanic people there. 
that was originally why you know Hitler said, "You will annex them to us, or we, you know, because they're ancient German peoples." And Poland said, eh, "That's our land, bro." And it's like, "No, they need to come back to us." And it was actually from World War One, I, I believe, where they made that split, where they cut that off and gave it to Poland. And so Hitler used that as a precursor to war. He said, "Well, we have to go save our brothers, these Germanic fellows." Man, I feel like I should know who they were. So they just march on in. Da, 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 a little of course, that didn't quite explain the Soviets on the other side, but... Well, it was... Uh, we are number one in invasions, too. You, we have invaded how many countries? And I, I consider a drone it's strike It's not an, an invasion, invasion if you're America doing it. Oh, know. it's freedom and liberty. Yeah. Or as Hillary Clinton would say... For American interests. American interests. That's not an that's not an invasion. Well, when Hitler invaded Poland, it was for American interests. Wait, what? American interests? Yeah, actually, it was. If you talk to FDR, huh? Man, we got to do a show on World War II sometime. And really tick people off. Oh, boy. That was a war that shouldn't oh, happen. Boy. So, but it was no, it's for German interests. How many how many wars should have happened? I mean, just realistically. Starting. Really, really examining it. I mean, I'm just, I'm thinking about what you're saying here. You know, oh, well, that's a war that shouldn't have happened, right? Okay. Well, uh, As opposed to what? World War One. There's a good thing we went to the Philippines. Spanish-American War? That's one. No, that's no. a really good one. Civil War? No, no, no. How about no. the Whiskey Rebellion? Hey. Well, the Rebellion was good. I like that one. Hmm. Nope, can't figure it out. I guess none of them were... We haven't been invaded, so I mean we can even War of eighteen twelve. War of eighteen twelve, though, come on. <laughs> That's a toss up. <laughs> I mean, you just got to get out of the U.S. government all the way thing. I mean, we're all American people all the way, but it, uh, there's always interest behind the scenes. It's just like today, whenever the government tells us something, there's it's never the full story. I mean. This is 2013. How many movies do we have to watch to understand that there's stuff going on behind the scenes? If you don't believe it, watch Bourne. It's a Bourne <laughs> series, man. There's some stuff going on. But that kind of stuff really happens. I mean, it's like JFK. That's, there's, it wasn't, that wasn't just the guy on the grass or whatever it was. Lee Harvey Oswald pulling a trigger. It's just amazing. It's amazing to me. Lots of things. Conspiracy. None dare call it conspiracy, of course, because then you're a wacko. What's wrong with being a wacko? Right on. Wars. I was, uh... Hmm. You got too late. Too late, Aaron. You no, it's to... not too late. It's too late. It's never too late. It's not you have to late. announce it before. We'll take this too, and then you announce it. Okay. That's fair. After we take these two callers, we're uh, we're gonna try and take only first time callers to, uh, for the first hour at least. All right, Steve. All or right. for the next 41 minutes. Whatever you'd like to do. <laughs> Four five eight talk is the number. Good morning. Yes. Good morning. Who's this? This is Bill. I think if it's me. Uh, it is you, Bill. What's All right. Well, All we right. don't know if it's you. Is it? <laughs> uh, well, uh, I'm pretty sure it's me. Right on. <laughs> Um, I, I like what you guys are talking about, uh, and uh, I've been listening to your show for a while. No, and, no way, Bill. <laughs> um, but there, there's there's one point uh, when you keep talking about how other countries are freer. Now, I've, I've been to a lot of different countries, and some of them are uh, definitely, those people are definitely not free. There are some places where they have dictators that the people are not really affected by it in certain, say, parts of that country. And they maybe temporarily are freer than even we are. But a dictator does eventually come down on them and, and uh, use his powers. Uh, I know that Aaron likes to think about, you know, that immigration's a good idea, but uh, I usually I think that's a fairly naive suggestion because if you go overseas... And I don't mean as a tourist where nobody's going to really bother you because you're bringing money. 
and unless they're going to rob you or something. But uh, if you're trying to live in those countries or, or go overseas to work, uh, for the most part, uh, I don't know about people in the lower 48, but I'll tell you, or people in Fairbanks actually are much different, but there's a lot of people in Alaska that are that are actually free, but we are losing, as you say, our freedoms daily. Um, and we get... Uh, the government likes to have us look at enemies outside of the country. Oh, oh, these bad people and those bad people. and Oh, or we got to go help these people with their revolution against that dictator. That's usually to keep you from looking at what's going on in your own country. <laughs> I, I, I would like to say, though, real quick, I, I never, I don't even remember ever making a comment that immigration's good one way or the other, going no. in or going Next. out. Well, okay. Yeah, uh, you. He means leaving. Well,. Either uh, you way. got it. He's no, got it's, a good point. It's Mr. the border in the first place that I I find is funny. Is you have you basically just have tax borders. It's an issue of the state, not really of uh, whether we move one way or another. Yeah, that's quite true. That's quite true. You got a good point with the uh, dictatorships and stuff like that. And if you line up, like if you did a line item deal, obviously we would be more free than anywhere in the world in certain areas. Like gun ownership, a lot of people can own guns, but we can own, obviously almost own anything that we want. I see almost because I can't own everything that I want. Right. But there are a lot of things that we are not freer. The other countries are more free. If you look at the... Uh, I've studied, just because I want to go check it out, Chile quite a bit, and they actually want expats and different people to come there because to start businesses they'll help people start businesses whatever they're trying they're actually going towards a free market economy mm-hmm. and yeah. every year in the heritage institute when they rate the country's economic freedoms chile is like skyrocketing along with like singapore and australia and new zealand stuff where america is steadily dropping yes that's a fact but we're, the, we're, on the we're other hand they I think they can own one handgun. It has to be proved. It has to stay in the home. I think they can own up to seven guns as long as they can show a need for sporting, you know, that they're outdoorsmen, hunters, or whatever like that. They don't have an inalienable right to self-defense, obviously. But right. I think, uh, and what I thought was interesting, what Aaron said a little bit earlier was um, people that say, and we've I've had it said to me more than once, too, Well, then, you don't like it. Why don't you just leave? Well, I think that that attitude actually is anti-American. Not anti-U.S. government, but I think it's core anti-American. We as a people, and I don't mean government, I mean the people themselves. I like to try to divorce the people from the actual state. The, The Joe Blow guy that goes out and works... The farmer, or truck driver, you know, the song, the truck driver, whatever. Everyone, just middle class, high class, lower class, we don't believe in classes. <clears throat> the people themselves. We, from day one, the people themselves have pointed out the deficiencies of their government and said, this needs to change. I mean, how else can you right a wrong unless you first point it out? You can't. You know, what is it they say about alcoholics? Their first step is to admit that they have a problem. And I think that's what, one of the things that we're trying to do. is not that we're just griping. is we're trying to point out we have a problem. Why not, instead of let's just leave and everyone's like, well, if you don't like it, just get out of here. No, why don't we fix the problem? Because the solution is more liberty, more freedom, more economic growth and wealth for ourselves, better lives for our children. That's all we're talking about. It doesn't have anything to do with what well, sucks and I'm going taking my ball somewhere else. I mean, that's uh, I think that's anti-American for people to tell other people to leave. Let's fix our problems. Let's be the freest country in the world, hands down. But Josh, we are fixing the problem. We just got to wait four years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I think you guys are, are are doing a good job of what you're trying to do, and that is to get people to think. Yeah. And uh, I think you maybe are inspiring people to read some history of the American Revolution. It comes up. American Revolution. It comes up in every show, and it is the basis for what made uh, America, or what used to be America, free, 
Yeah. And, and and it is the basis of what all of the so-called patriots of today. I think what they're it's not the it's not the uh, country. It, it's it's the concept of freedom. And I think you guys are doing a good job of making people think about that and keep up the good work. Sure, I think the core of what we try and Appreciate do it. is um, try and separate people in their mind from equating liberty and freedom and the American ideal from the entity of the state and to show that the founders got it wrong right out of the gate by setting up the institution of the state. And the, um, someone reminded me of something, there's a there's a big difference between the word or the use, application of freedom and liberty. Freedom is something that an institution allows you to do. I am free to get in my car, blah, blah, blah. I am free to buy this. I am free to buy that. Liberty is where each man does as he sees fit for himself and does not, Outside which, of includes, which includes responsibility and does not egress on his neighbor, on his property, and he keeps his contract, keeps his words, keeps his promises, which includes... You're not just free to worship. You have the liberty to worship God the way that you want to. You have the liberty to live your life, to trade freely, to do as you see fit for your own good. And that sounds selfish, but that's what people do. People go to work for their own good and to provide for the family. But there's a difference between freedom, which is something that you're allowed to do, and liberty, which is that's your basic right, and you're going to do it. Right, it's like people that talk about how here in America we have the right to own a gun, but they allow the gun to be regulated beyond belief. I mean, there's so many regulations on firearms. So, is it any surprise that we're all worried about gun control and going out and buying up everything on the planet because we're waiting for it to happen when we already don't believe it's a right? Right, we're free to own a gun, but we're not at liberty. Exactly. Otherwise, I'd have it. And I mean, if we believe that, then we wouldn't follow the regulations that are on them right now. Right. And, and since we do, we have to believe that if they banned them completely, we would comply with that. I'd like to go back to a little bit ago when Josh was actually hitting on conspiracies, which 99% of the time we don't mess around with conspiracies at all for the obvious reason. The main reason I think that we don't is because it really is just a symptom of the state and not the cause and but sometimes it's fun to do josh uh and another reason i think we stay away from conspiracies is because it's much easier to get people to believe a lie than to get them to believe that they've been lied to it for i don't know why that is but it's pretty much the rule i just want to uh last last year uh, at on september 11th I had a lot of requests from people to talk about 1911, which I or 911, which I declined to do because I just I don't think it was appropriate. But since we're on conspiracies and talking about people believing a lie, I think I would just point out a couple of the facts and not talk about any of the conspiracy, just the facts. It'll take me five seconds. 19 Arab Muslims outwitted the most sophisticated military defense system in the world four times in succession. They defeated the laws of physics by having collapsing buildings fall at a free fall rate. They defeated the laws of chemistry by melting steel girders, which require 2,750 degrees Fahrenheit, with aviation fuel that burns at a maximum of 1,517 degrees Fahrenheit. They brought down three World Trade Center buildings, one, two, and seven, by hitting only two of them. Each building falled neatly in its own footprint. All of the hijackers were on board. But we're not sure why none of their names appeared on any of the flight manifests. At least five of the hijackers turned up alive and well after their suicide missions. They now live in the Middle East. Some have been interviewed by the BBC. A plane hit the Pentagon, one of the most guarded buildings in the world. Unfortunately, no CCTV footage of the actual plane exists. The wreckage, the plane parts, the luggage, and the bodies were never found. Cell phone calls were made at altitudes and speeds that make it impossible, over 2,000 feet and at 230 miles per hour. We still won't know how they did this. Unfortunately for democracy, that's the official line on 9-11. I really do think it's easier to believe a lie than to believe that you're being lied to. In fact, the Nazis expounded upon that, and their minister of um, propaganda 
stated that that was exactly the case. The bigger the lie, the more likely they'll swallow it. And once they've swallowed it, it's almost impossible to make them believe that it's a lie. Like when we took uh, Osama bin Laden at Tora Bora in 2002, and then all of a sudden we didn't? And then all of a sudden we magically go in and get him out of, um, where now? Pakistan? Pakistan. And dump him at sea as quickly as possible. <laughs> and no one gets to see him. Oh, no, Aaron, And it come seems on. like You're the people just... involved in that had some kind of helicopter wreck. You're just trying to cause trouble. No one wants to believe any of that. Ah, you this just government said doesn't. Nobody that. wants to believe any of that. Well, let's have some first-time callers. This one. It's we funny. Back. We always believe every. We disbelieve everything they tell us unless it's some kind of military question or an attack or anything like that. Then we swallow it hook, line, and sinker. Pearl Harbor. <laughs> 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 we didn't know. <laughs> 458 Talk is the number looking for first time callers on Patriots the Men. Well, if you don't like it in Nottingham, why don't you just leave? That's a, you, you love it or leave it, Josh. That's right. You got in Nottingham. All right. Welcome back to Patriots. I, I wonder if they say that yeah. in China. If you don't like it, leave. <laughs> No, I think Go they to say. Taiwan. I think they say. I don't like it. Can I leave? <laughs> no. All right, you guys ready to take some phone calls? Four five eight talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Oh, uh, my name's Frank. Frank, go ahead. And uh, uh, you, you caught me all right. My phone isn't telling it very well. Yeah, Sounds I got good. you. Uh huh. We can hear you fine. Go ahead. Oh, Sounds okay. Good. I wanted to talk about Benghazi again and the reality uh, and the gun running, that what is going on now with our president and his embedded fifth column of the press is so much worse than Nixon and Watergate with, with, and uh, Bill Clinton with the gal in the, in the Oval Office. I mean, they, they were like tempest in a teapot in comparison. I mean, the utter contempt for our Constitution, I understand you guys aren't because you find a lot of flaws and so do I. That's not the point. It's been the underpinning of our country for over 200 years. And we, we have an, this embedded column that's in it. In, it's right, but if, if you're, if you're going to go, if you're gonna go purely on people that ironic. usurp the Constitution, we would have to start with George Washington. Now, he, um, what was your name again, sir? Frank. It was Frank? Okay. Yeah, he, he called last we can discuss the Benghazi thing, and he's got a good point. I mean, the whole thing is a cover-up and a setup and a another conspiracy, basically. I mean, you have Hillary Clinton, which uh, oh, brain aneurysm or something. You know, it's so funny. Just like the thing, this is exactly what she did back in the '90s when they called her up to testify about. Uh, I think it was uh, what they call the Clinton thing, the Clinton Gator. When she had the, oh, the Whitewater, right? Yeah, yeah, the white water. When she had a bought a hundred, let's see, bought a thousand dollars in cattle futures, and one month later she made a hundred thousand. Strangely enough, and she did basically just used her old playbook where she says, "I don't remember my brains in a blender. It's jello." <laughs> just couldn't remember anything. It was a fantastic. And she did the same thing with Benghazi. Obviously. Four people, I think, were killed in Benghazi, in the Benghazi attack. Obviously, in my mind, they wanted the ambassador killed. He obviously was someone that they didn't need, didn't want, didn't need to have around. So we get maybe, him killed. Maybe he knew too much. Right. But then there's the other point that you and I talked about last week, Steve. Well, he wasn't at the embassy. He was at a CIA hideout compound, a little safe house there. And... You know, there's just too much that's always behind the scenes. On the one hand, we always point out, or we like to point out, these guys over there, the uh, terrorists or whatever, they still ride around on goats, right? They don't have shoes. They don't have hardly anything. I want to ride a goat. They don't have anything, right? But somehow, somehow they get sophisticated intelligence about where certain people are at certain times. It's almost like... I don't know, do they have live feed on Google Earth that we don't get over here because the government blocks it or something? So they're just like, hey, 
it was just amazing the coordinated attacks these fellows get to do with the uh, information that they somehow get and uh, and yet they're stone age people that can barely feed themselves or their children enough rice to survive they walk around with no shoes they wear robes from the biblical times and turbans and yet they can defeat the world's mightiest superpower only when it seems to be very convenient for them to defeat them you have to you have to wonder though if there's something else at work because i mean if you look at the american revolutionaries they defeated the most advanced military of yeah, their yeah. day and and the way in which they did it i mean if you go back and read the accounts of the battles there were these mysterious circumstances where fog came in and obscured the british they had it was, al- it was almost as if they had God on their side. Divine intervention, sometimes. And, and if you, and which now, if you think about that for a moment, is it possible that these people that are fighting us have God on their side? Well, when they win, they say. No, they in do. the War of 1812, you had the most horrendous hailstorm the ever recorded, and it only fell on the British. The <laughs> biggest hurricane. That's when they were attacking. Uh, New Orleans. Yeah. No. I thought it was one. Yeah, right. They got their. They got their. They got their aces handed to them. The wind handed them their butt. Destroyed the British Navy right there. Otherwise, that would have been the end of the war. And the Americans uh, killed. Was it four thousand British? Or two thousand British in under an hour with the loss of four lives. We pretty much just. I think it was out. four. Wasn't that Andy Jackson? Yep. Isn't there a song? There is. 1814, we took a little trip. Yeah. That's when the Swamp Fox became famous. That's a good show, too, the old one. Yeah, so, yeah, there are times in history where, I mean, that's a fascinating one. They land, the war is over, baby. They're going to clean clock. The whole, the might of the British Navy and their Marines and soldiers and everything, all of a sudden this huge hurricane comes through. They didn't have... C-SPAN, or not C-SPAN, they didn't have the Weather Channel. They didn't have NOAA. They didn't have NOAA. Early warning system. Sheesh. Which, obviously, those things don't happen anymore, because we do. That's why, um, that's why that, uh, Louisiana didn't get buried in that last one, and everyone got out. What? No. (laughs) So... This mighty hurricane came in and it wiped out the British fleet, killed them. Hail came down from the sky and knocked them on the noggin and killed them. Completely yeah, there eviscerated. Was, the hail them. was big enough that it actually took a bunch of lives. Yeah. That's awesome. So, then, so to go back to the point, if if we see divine intervention on behalf of the revolutionaries, on behalf of the Americans, defeating the most impressive Highly, most highly trained military the, with the best equipment in the world. And then we turn around and we see the same kind of things happening. It's like what you were saying, Aaron, about 9-11. How is it possible that these Arabs did it? Well, maybe, maybe God is on their side. Maybe God is a little God changed tired the, of dealing with the American arrogance. God changed sides? He changed the melting <coughs> point of steel just for 9-11. I don't know. Well, I mean, every time, obviously, every country thinks that God is on their side. But uh, it's an interesting thought. Hmm. All yeah, four of our lines are on hold. Four, First five, time callers, come on. Four, five, eight, talk the number. Yes, that person. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Me? It might be you. Okay. Gloria, I'm a second time caller. Is that of the acceptable? That's close enough. All right. Thank you, Gloria. Go ahead. We were homeschooled. One, two, same Oh, time. wow. <laughs> Well, uh, I I just thought that I should uh, maybe uh, suggest this. This is a suggested, airworthy term to refer to those who won't believe in conspiracy theories. And I say, call them baby boy, baby girl. (laughs) Okay. All right. (laughs) True. Young children, young chillins believe everything they're told. Yep. I know, my chillins think I'm the greatest thing walking on earth. <laughs> <laughs> They've obviously been lied to. <laughs> wow. The bigger the lie, right? That's right. The easier to swallow. Thanks, Gloria. I appreciate the call. Thank you. 
Four five eight talk is the number. Good morning. This is page. Well, this is actually hour one of Patriots Limit. We call it the Saturday morning wake up call. Who's this? Hi, this is Chris. Up. Chris, go ahead. Um, you give me an idea. Uh, a little while back about the. Uh, you don't like it, leave. Mm-hmm. Let's take up a collection and print up a whole bunch of bumper stickers in different languages, and English too, and just put if you don't like it, leave. And um, what else was I going to say? Um, oh, today, with uh, instead of just killing people, they either kill you or they stick a woman on you and shame you out of office. Mm. So. You know what? That's that used to be the preferred method. If you look back historically, how they got people out of method, uh, out of office, or out of uh, a place of power, it, yep. because there used to be that people would have shame. More, it was more effective to turn loose a woman and get a person to resign office because of some indiscretion. Oh yeah. There's... And then and then Clinton came along. <laughs> Did you? And, and gave and gave everybody the excuse of well, it depends on what you mean by the word is. Yeah, <laughs> I did not have sex with that woman. Exactly. <laughs> she had it with me. <laughs> Thanks for the show. Thank you very much for the call. Four five eight talk is the number. Good morning. Who's this? Hey, this is Claudio. Claudio, you are not a first You're time caller. You're not a first time you? caller. You You're right. trying to. Wait, 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 wait. I mean, maybe it's because he doesn't speak English. Very, very. How about uh, first time hey. callers and people we like a lot? All right, uh, no, 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 Uno right. time, my, Uno. My, my he should have said Uno English. time callers. Primero. No, he's not. He's not a Spanish speaker. Oh, that's right. He's, he's Portuguese. It's, uh, my English is better than your Portuguese. You know what? I will grant you that your English is definitely better than our Portuguese. What's on your mind, Claudio? Hey, I got a, I got a two conspiracy theory for you guys. Nice. Okay, one one is the okay. This week, before I knew anything about it, I heard about a guy that was a snitch for the ATF. I I didn't know anything about. It. I never heard this guy before. I don't know if it's true or not, but he got a you know he got a, a fame going around that he's a snitch for the ATF. So the guy had ended up to be the one that make explosion there on a on China Ridge. And guess who got him in trouble that say he was bragging about being doing the explosion there? It was an ATF snitch. So I wonder what's happened on that one. I have my own conspiracy on that. If I'd like to run it down real quick. Oh, Aaron, please do. Okay. Have the board. <laughs> especially thank, since we're thank talking Thank you so about, much for stirring that pot, Claudio. <laughs> especially since we're talking about Chris Menino, who, by the way, is friends with a couple of particular people um he's friends with michael dukes for instance and he's really good friends with eric grabber um and chris manito has had a grand old time the last two or three years telling everybody that would listen to him that i'm an fbi informant <laughs> which it's not just me he's also a couple of my friends he's told people they're fbi informants um Alan Flowers in particular. I'm good still not convinced. Here, right. no. And I'm not convinced I'm not either. <laughs> no, no. It, it, and technically, um, aren't we all FBI I, informants now? I've heard from quite a few people that become wary of me that Michael Dukes has went on to tell them that I was an FBI informant. And he gets his information from Chris Manito. I'm not bashing him for believing his friend. But a couple of interesting facts. Um, Eric Grabber just got incarcerated and is alleged... Now, be careful. You said facts. A couple of interesting events, not necessarily facts, that I've noticed is that Eric Grabber, who's Menino's, one of Menino's closest friends, it just got indicted and allegedly um, made a conspiracy with the informant to go down and kill somebody in Indiana. Was it Indiana, though? Yeah, it was Indiana. And what's funny about that is leading up to that, Menino had been telling everybody that he was going to move to Indiana. So if you kind of do the math there, the only person that we know that was moving, that's friends with Eric Grabber, that was, and Eric Grabber is going to kill somebody allegedly in Indiana, and all of a sudden the informant turns on him and turns him in, and now magically you have this same guy going up and exploding some ordinances right in front of a informant, and he's going to get criminal mischief. I don't know, to me it just kind of seems like maybe possibly it's to reestablish the credibility of maybe Menino. 
because he does sell class three weapons and is connected to all kinds of crazies in this town, you couldn't ask for a better informant, in my opinion. And one of the detectives here in town, who I'm pretty good friends with, I asked him who he thought the informant was on the uh, Indiana case there. And he said, well, obviously, it's Chris Manino. Who else is friends with Eric Grabber that was moving? I mean, it, it's just so obvious. And now he's getting this, uh, his last run-in for the exact same thing. Uh, they, the state dropped all the charges. Who else are they going to drop all the charges on on a what could have been a felony with explosives? And this time they say, oh, it's a lot more serious. We had a undercover FBI informant take pictures of him doing it, and we're going to give him criminal mischief. Criminal mischief is nothing. It's not even a charge. It's ridiculous. Isn't it criminal mischief? Like, have you go out and slash somebody's tires or something? No, that's a misdemeanor offense because you damage somebody's property. Well, they're saying he damaged someone's property. Well, that's alleged. All right, now right. he's just being charged as criminal mischief, which is All nothing. those things are alleged. But doesn't that reestablish his credibility in this town? Because supposedly an informant was there and turned him in. How could he be an informant if an informant turns him in? Right? Yep. I mean, you don't want to lose the credibility of a guy like that in this town because he's connected with everybody. He sells all the law enforcement, all of their uh, cool knickknacks and toys, and he's connected with everybody. He's the last guy, if you're going to use him and give him up as your informant, man, that's a tough call to make, to just take in a fish like Eric Grabber. <laughs> so if you want to backpedal and clear his name as the informant, well, then you have to have a little bit of, I'm going to go up on China Ridge and blow something up. It just happens to be right in front of a supposed undercover FBI agent and get turned in for criminal mischief. How retarded. Do you, you know that that word has been struck from Alaska law, right? What? Retarded. Okay. They, how? Just, they just passed a rule or a law that we that they are going to remove that law that word from all Alaska regulations and replace it with, if you see if I get that uh, this correctly, um, mentally disabled. Um, well, yeah, I can't remember. The word the retarded is actually in the law. Literally, <laughs> it is being removed. We just passed a law this week. Here in Alaska, to remove that word from Alaska law. It so I can't say my motor has a retarder on it anymore. I gotta say <laughs> that it's mentally. I have a mentally. Um, I don't even know. All right. But it, it doesn't change the fact that of what I'm saying there. It's more than obvious to me, anyway, that you had an undercover agent that was very close to Eric Grabber. All the signs point to Menino, and all of a sudden he gets turned in by an informant for something that's so minuscule. Why would any informant in the world play his card at that moment if he's trying to put Chris Menino in jail? You don't play your card on a criminal mischief. Aaron, 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 you're obviously trying to cover for yourself. Oh. We all know the reason that you close your store is because the Schaefer Cox case is closed, and so you're pulling up because your case is done. Yeah, that's the rumor going around. <laughs> your, your, your job is finally complete. That rumor actually is going around thanks to Michael Dukes. I really appreciate that. Oh, Snapple. That's awesome. Which is so funny because who who are the... Well, I guess that just would play into our role, right? That we stood up for those guys more than anyone out there. Right, and we put our, only stood except up Except for the for fact we put our money where our mouth to, was. Right, we had to clear our name and stuff. So, so we stood up and pointed out the Ill- illegalities, the unconstitutional. This, this show is to find delivery. people like Claudio. Well, the, the, That's the, right. The fact, the fact that you had the the wife and child of of the per, one of the people that was thrown in jail come and live at your house. Well, what better person to keep an eye on him? Yeah, we tortured him nightly to get information out of him. I waterboarded him. Yeah, especially the six year old. He was like toast. He gave up every night. He's like, no more. Yeah, it's Pussy. such a joke. I'll tell you where the candy is. <laughs> I'll tell you where I hid your candy bar. Yeah. Hey, uh, We're laughing Claudio, at this, but it's a serious call, situation, Claudio. and uh, it uh, it's just funny to me that Aaron more so, but it's just... Uh, it's just funny to me that um, prominent people in town will go around and tell other people that I'm an FBI informant, when the guy that they're best friends with that's telling them that is all is. over the paper for... In, Everything says that he's an FBI informant. Everything, including his his new charge that was brought against him, 
points even more to be him being an informant than anything else. But I guess if he's the guy that has all the cool guns and lets you shoot him at the gun range, then you'll believe anything that he says. Hmm. Ready to take another call? That's just funny. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning. Welcome to the Saturday morning wake up call. Who's this? This could be me, but I don't know. I'm a second time caller. All right, Winston, I think. No, it's no, not. No, it's, 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 Jor- no. it's Jorgie. It's Jorgie. Sorry, Jorgie. This is a second time caller and probably the last time. We put you on the friends list, though. <laughs> so you can call anytime. <laughs> I just, uh, I, uh, I, I want a little bit to answer the guy that keeps harping about uh, Libya. Oh, yeah, go the ahead. Four Please people do. that got killed there. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, I gave up almost five years of my life starting in February of 1942. And uh, I don't have any education, and uh, but I know a few things that had happened. Uh, this guy keeps Hartman well. When the invasion of Normandy came up, we had a general that couldn't stand it because he wasn't getting advertised too much, and Patton was getting all the information, so they decided to go to the channel, and uh, Church and the storm had come up, and Churchill said, no, don't do it. These storms only last about three days, and we're just going to commit suicide for all the people that would be trying to launch and get over there. But they held off one day, and then... This general couldn't hold off any longer, so he Can I take to, a guess? to go across. Can I take a guess of the general of whom we are speaking? He became president afterwards. Aha. Uh-huh. Now, this goes to show you that uh, all these service people that got, they didn't get killed. Some of them got killed, but most of them drowned due to the bad weather and the storm. And the coverage of the Air Force is going to drop the bombs to hold them back. The weather was so bad, they dropped the bombs in the wrong place. place. And those ones that did make it to shore, most of them were sitting ducks to get killed. Let's not forget our good friend Monty, who yeah. had a large part of that, too, for the exact same reason. The glory, okay. glory hounds. Oh. Now, General let's McGonagall. go a little bit farther along in life. That, uh, that deal... Uh, 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 was on call for. This is in my opinion. So the mm-hmm. next deal comes along. We get another president that sent 58,000 military personnel over to Vietnam, a place we shouldn't even have been. They didn't do anything to that president. They should have hung him, in my opinion. Oh, you kind of missed something there. You missed the Korean War. Well, the Korean War, I didn't... Uh, uh, I recall the Korean War, and I remember uh, uh, portions of it, but I didn't follow that one too close because during the Korean War, I was overseas most of the time. Well, they do call it the Forgotten War. Yeah, Yeah. True. so I, I I hate to say that I didn't follow that close, but I was too busy trying to make a living. Well, there's no, that's a good point, but look, just... Uh to interrupt you just for a second, so we don't skip the Korean War, what happened there? The exact same thing, where you had a president named Truman, who got all hurt in the rear end because his general, MacArthur, decided to forego forwarding what his plans were and going to the United Nations, and just went in and decided to kick the Chinese butt. And doing so, he got all the glory, and the president didn't anymore, so we had to fire him. Yeah. He, he went straight to the Chinese border, and we actually pulled back behind the 38th parallel That's of, correct. Our, of our own accord just to appease the United Nations because we didn't get the permission to kick ass. That's right. In I, China, I can recall stamp. all that. And uh, then Truman jumped on an airplane, went over and fired MacArthur. Yep. And then he went into hiding, I believe, because he feared that uh, MacArthur would come here and put him would arrest them for high treason. Uh-huh. So then let's go to another... Vietnam. Oh, okay, go ahead, yep. Okay. It's all yours again. Uh, I was in, uh, pretty much uh, informed about this one because I started following politics a little bit and listening to stuff. Well, we had another president that uh, when uh, uh, 
Lebanon was being struck over there. He sent some military personnel over there, 240 of them, if I recall, to protect the U.S. The United States uh, holdings over there because they were going to be swamped. They called them then guerrillas, and uh, he sent these personnel over there. And uh, when they landed there, the guerrillas swamped on them, and uh, all 240 of them got killed because they didn't have any live ammunition. It was all blanks. Do you recall that? That would have been under Reagan, wouldn't it? That's correct. Actually, I, I don't recall. The, I do. The, yeah. the, the, I mean, I, I, know, I remember the the Marine bombing in Beirut. Yeah, but that the Marine bombing that, in Beirut, they lost two two uh, two personnel that was in a, some type of a fighter, I think, an F-15 or something like that. Yeah, the uh, what he's talking about is when we sent the, uh, I think they were Marines, weren't they? Yes. I sent Marines in, and they were annihilated. Yes. The worst, I mean, it was a black eye for Reagan right off the bat. Okay, Stupidity. so nothing happened to him. Nope. Okay, now let's go to the recent war that happened in uh, Iraq. We went into Iraq with false information. They said that this was all facts and stuff, and so we went in there and come to find out that there was the facts that they had were all incorrect. So we lost uh, uh, some personnel, military personnel there. Nothing ever took place for that. They didn't go after the president or anything. So now let's go to uh, Libya, Benghazi. I happen to be working overseas <laughs> in Benghazi. I've been there. I've been locked up in Benghazi. I know what it is to be held. So we have four personnel that got killed. First of all, the ambassador that wanted that job claimed he should have that job because he was experienced and he knew how to get along with those people. So then they gave him the job of being an, an ambassador. He volunteered for this. The other thing, the three other people that got killed, at one time they said they were retired SEALs, and another time said that uh, they were active in the military and they volunteered for this position. What I'm getting at is when you volunteer for something, you don't really know what you're getting into, really, but that was open deal, and I spent an extra three months before I got out of service in 46 because I volunteered for something I thought that I would better my life, but it wound up it didn't. So I finally got out of the service. But those, I spent uh, 41 days short of five years under Uncle Sam, and that's the only time in my life that I was, uh, couldn't do anything about it. <laughs> and I'm not squawking about it. I volunteered. Sure. That was my own decision to do that. So the guy that keeps calling in and wants to get rid of our president now, which I might go along with him and don't go along with him, but facts are facts. And that's the only reason I called in. Probably, I'll probably never call it again, but at least I got it off my chest. Well, we'll so. try to entice you to call again, because that was a great call. Yeah. We appreciate it. Appreciate yep. you, Talk Georgie. to you next time. Thank you very much. <laughs> We're coming up on the Fox News here at the top of the hour, and then we have another hour of Patriots Lament on the way. Check us out online, kfar660.com, and on your smartphone with the free TuneIn Radio app. Download it today and listen right now. Are you crazy like us? Welcome to Patriots Lament right here on KFAR. Joining us in the studio, as always, the the mad men behind the, uh, the show here. We've got Josh Bennett from Big Run Enterprises. Good morning, Josh. Good morning. And we also have Aaron Bennett from a uh, officially closed built business now, uh, yes, you could say. Yeah, it's no longer. He's out of the informant the, the business. FBI doesn't need me anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's just going to move on and be a professional informant. No, right? <laughs> well, they they pay a lot better if I don't have the store. Nice. <laughs> so how do you, how do you get in with the with the with the gun crazies if you don't have a place for them to come and buy explosives and gun? Oh, you never did explosives, did you? Um. Well, not in no. If you're getting paid by the FBI, why in the world would you travel on the Dalton Highway to take? Great to Prudo, apparently in your a, life. I'm an David. adrenaline junkie. Ah, that's what it is. <laughs> that's just for the fun. Yeah, that doesn't really actually happen. You just 
He just says it though. Oh, All right. See, yeah. I've been wondering actually the last week. You have to be like my buddy Ronan Nagel. If you're going to be a good informer, you got to have a good alibi. So he's always traveling to New York for television broadcasting reasons like every other week. But he's really just going and reporting on me. But he doesn't realize that I'm an informant too. So <laughs> You're informing on him. That's sweet. I'm informing on both of you. Like when the camera comes on, my phone's like... <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Let's hit them all, Steve. All right, 458 talk is the number. For this good morning, caller. Are you still there? Yeah, is that me? It might be. I guess you are there. Who's this? Yeah, this is Dwayne. Dwayne. First time caller. Uh, I'm standing. I you guys a lot when I sometimes can wake up before I'm, when I've been out too late, of course. But That's I a struggle for us, too, brother. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, I wanted to touch on what you guys were saying now earlier about God being with the other, the enemy, you know, because we've been having so much trouble and whatnot. Mm-hmm. I, I believe it isn't really um, God is with them and not us, he's, we've turned against him, just like with all this weather is going on, and it's almost biblical the way I look at it, but they say it's the jet stream and all that, but, I mean, it, I, I'll just give you an example. Uh, well, scripture is saying that if we turn against Israel, God will turn against us, you know, like what's going on, we're sending Israel, or what is it, Egypt, uh, 20 F-16s and 30 tanks, well, we're doing that, and they're the, they're going on with Iran and being their buddies. Well, they all hate Israel. Well, I I like to point out something real quick down the same line there. Uh, I I was reading earlier some statistics that show that we're not the greatest place in the world, but one of those was that we rate 189th out of 207 countries in infant mortality. Do you know why that is? Yes, because um, we're um, murdering babies. Yep. Well, I Come think on. that we can pretty much seal the deal of whose side God might be on. Yeah, well, we've turned against God. And there was somebody I wanted to, what, what I was getting at is that there was somebody that had written a book or something, and I think I heard it on 700 Club or something, where whenever there was a whole lot of bad things happening, like even when Katrina hit, there was something, I forget the book, but somebody could look it up, but when Reagan was there, he had did something against Israel or, or turned his back on him, and then Katrina hit, and there was another time, there was another president when some big um, catastrophic thing hit all up the border of Florida, well, another one of our presidents would, you know, back down and didn't back up Israel, and we were a Christian nation, so, you know, I believe that we we should get back to our roots, and that's happened, a lot of the problem we're having with, with the kids and taking God out of the schools and just everything like that. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah, the um, I differ a little bit on the subject to Israel. I think the best thing we could do to them to support them would be to get out of the Middle East and let them take care of their own affairs. Well, that's all well and fine, but, I mean, they are our allies, you know. I mean, why are we helping people that hate them and want to wipe them? And oh, not yeah. stop no, that's what I'm care. saying. We shouldn't be helping the Egyptians or the Sauds or the Kuwaits. No. Or, I think the argument could be made that period. we really shouldn't be helping anybody anywhere because what, what made us... What made us the world's policeman and what made us the world's buddy? I mean, mind why, your own business. Exactly. I, well, I, yeah, we ought to get out of all them places, bring our boys home, and uh, maybe just um, seal our borders up. Another thing I, I was thinking about they should suggest is take all our army guys back and make like a prison wall with turrets all along the southern border with cameras, and that'll keep all these guns and nut jobs from coming over our side. And, we can, you know, put our boys to work. <laughs> but you got to remember that uh, the guns that are coming back from the southern border actually are sent down there by our own government. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Not you got to watch, watch your border gun. on both sides. Kind of, kind of funny. Problem. Yeah, though you mentioned that. That's exactly that's exactly how the Berlin Wall got built, though. I mean, if you think about why why they built the Berlin Wall, we we always saw it from the perspective of the West of oh, they're trying to keep their people in. But it was built at the time with, well, we got to keep those Western spies out. Right. That's uh, yeah. one thing that worries me about having a <laughs> a wall. Is, uh, not only would it keep people out, but it's also very convenient to keep the cattle in. That's true. Okay. I'll <laughs> All right, man. <laughs> Thanks for the call. Enjoyed that. 458-TALK is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Uh, hello? Hey, who is this? Gerald. Gerald, go ahead. What's on your mind? Uh, I wanted to say something about informant. 
Go ahead. Uh, first, I wanted to say there is a felony criminal mischief, and you get a year or more for it. Guess how I know? And also, the War of 1812, I believe, was officially over before the Battle of New Orleans. They just didn't get the word out. But, um, That's true. Yeah. Right, but it's, it still took place. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, but back in, like, in the 86 or so, there was a guy the cops wanted really bad. <clears throat> they busted him after an armed robbery. And he, he tried to leave out the back door of the Safeway. And the cops had the back door surrounded with their cars pulled off offset. And as they were shooting it out, someone back in the woods behind the cops opened up from behind the cops with a fully automatic. I think it was like a M16. They really wanted to bust this guy bad. And so they stuck an informant in his cell with him. And so the guy they really wanted uh, went to court. And then his cellie, the informant, follows him into court. And for the first time in court, testifies against him and reveals his uh, treachery. And so when the, the court thing is over for the day, they let the informant go back to the, the living unit in jail first. We call them modules. So the informant walks into the module where he had betrayed his cell. He walks into the module, and as he walks into the module, he announces to all the other prisoners, that guy ratted on me. And it took a while for everyone to, to figure out who was the rat and who was not the rat. I just wanted to share that little story. Hmm. Thanks. That's interesting. They're probably not looked at too highly upon in jail. Well, actually, in the state of Alaska, they take very good care of their informants. I mean, they really do a good job of it. I mean, they, they've got, like, if you're familiar with how the incarceration scenario works here in the state of Alaska, everything's divided up into, like, many different little units. And they separate people really fast, and it, 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 it's actually it's, it's very safe. It, it, they take real good care of their informants in the state of Alaska. Hmm. But the general population, I don't suppose, likes them too well. No, of course not. I don't not. think the general population on the outside of the prison system likes them that much. There's just something about, I mean, it goes back to childhood, I think, when your little brother tells on you or something, or you, your big brother tells on you know, tells mommy and daddy that you did something. There's just something, maybe it's in, st- in in our nature or something. We just don't like people that rat people out. Well, Josh, you have it a little bit wrong about the, the culture of prison and crime here in Alaska. Okay. Uh, we, we have a small population, and we're very isolated from the lower 48 generally. Yeah. And there's a lot of death and murders and drunken, someone gets blown away stuff happens in Alaska. A lot of stuff like that happens in Alaska, but we don't have like real gang bangers and a really strongly established criminal culture, a real strongly established prison culture. It's, it's not. It's less than what you might think of from hearing about it in the lower 48 stuff. It's it's safer than you might think. It happens all the time. It's very common. Sure. Hmm. Thanks for the call. Yeah, Appreciate thanks it. for the call. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Welcome to Patriots Lent. Who's this? Good morning, Frank Curry, the deaf guy. Hey, Frank, how you doing, brother? <laughs> hey, I can hear you pretty good. Good deal. Hey, um, hey, good show this morning. I have a couple of issues here. You know, Dave Quinlan called in from the halfway house. Yes. Uh, last week on your show, talked about some of the uh, injustice in his case. Uh, he will be having a hearing on the 13th Wednesday at 8.15 before Judge Seekins. So uh, I'm making a Who? major. I, I contact, he contacted me, and I'll make sure I'll be there. Uh, I guess he wants to file a motion to uh, dismiss or fire his public pretender, I call him. And the uh, second thing he should do, I'm not an attorney, but I can suggest it, that he definitely file a motion to, to, to dismiss, his old case, dismiss his old case on many grounds. Most of all, that uh, when you're arrested, you have a right to a motion discovery. I always tell people, whether it's a misdemeanor or felony, when you go to court, regardless where your lawyer says, you always want to let the court know that you want a motion discovery of all the evidence being put forth on your case. Well, it's supposed to be 20 days. Well, it's been 50 days. And I think that's enough grounds right to dismiss the case. And also, they're bringing up fires. Now, in the state of Alaska, the laws have passed that after 10 years, they cannot bring up a fire. Right. Unless it's some type of a child molestation or something like that, or kidnapping, that might be a... That might be a cause to do so. But on the other hand, uh, I appreciate him calling me show and uh, him getting contact uh, back to me. And also, if those guys have any complaints out there and, and you have an opportunity to get them sent back to jail, if the 
very speculative, but you have, do have a constitutional right to file a class action suit to anything out there at that halfway house or FCC regarding any medical uh, medical thing or any injustice or any uh, harassment or any un- unnecessary force to put upon prisoners. Uh, also, I called in uh, Dermot uh, Cole's blog today in the paper, uh, you know, there's a bill coming forward regarding arresting federal authorities on this uh, little larger says it's unconstitutional. Now, get this. Listen, this is supposed to be the arrest of federal authorities who try to enforce federal gun laws. The part of the bill, she says, is largely unconstitutional. Kathleen Straubau, who is a, I knew this would happen, is from the legal department of the governor, under the governor, and she stated attempting to prevent federal officers from enforcing federal law presents a rather clear supremacy clause issues. Now, get this. She said in the reference clause of Article 6 of the Constitution, it says federal laws shall be the supreme law of the land. Come on now. I thought the Constitution was the supreme law of the land. Yeah, I thought... And that's uh, the problem. She don't understand the Tenth Amendment. Didn't we it clearly this? explains to me... The, the federal government only has certain limited powers under we the people of states. Yeah, I thought we eviscerated that whole thing last week. I tried, and maybe it just went over. Well, obviously, I doubt that anyone like that listens to the show anyways. But, yeah, for people who don't know, you need to call these people and educate them on their idiocy, because that's what they are. They're fools, they're pseudo-intellectual idiots. The Supremacy Clause specifically states and what they always th- leave out in pursuance of the constitution federal laws shall be the supreme law of the land if it's not pursuant to the federal constitution and in the enumerated powers given to the federal government by the states then you don't have to follow it you have to remember it's by the states the power given to the federal government was given by the states the states are supreme over the federal government even the Supremacy Clause says the only thing where, supre- where federal law is supreme is when it is in pursuance of the document. And a gun control law is against the document, against the Second Amendment. The states have the right and the, also the duty to nullify those laws. And they have every right in the stinking world to arrest federal agents who would try to uphold a federal law that is not in pursuance to the Constitution of the United States of America. It's unjust. And it's unlawful. It's an unlawful act. It's just like having a criminal gang going out and deciding, this is what we're going to do to you. Well, no, you don't have the authority to do so. The state does have the authority. Where does the state get their authority? From the people in those states. We give the state the authority that gave the federal government the authority. We are the ultimate authority. When you give your employee the authority to do something, you still have the right to nullify your employee's actions. The federal government is instituted by the states, which is instituted by the people. We are the supreme rulers of the land. They don't have the jurisdiction to to usurp the Constitution. Why does it feel so opposite of that? Why does it seem so obvious to some people and everyone... They're just a bunch of lily-livered chicken poops, Frank. That's all they are. They want to get their federal dollars, and that's all it comes down to. Well, uh, 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 You know, say, Governor Parnell, uh, he's weak. And I mean, he's just probably the weakest governor we got. You know, he uh, got up there and bragged about signing the Second Amendment right to bear arms here in Alaska. Big deal. But I'm going to tell you, he's going he's gonna to get down and whimper like a sheeple to the federal government. He's not going to let anybody in. And that's the type of league people that has only legal staff. I remember John called, you know, three different times since he's found that he brought up fully informed jury nullification bills. And guess where he got stopped? In the damn legal department and that attorney general we got here. We do not elect an attorney general that should be accountable and responsible to the people of Alaska. He works for the governor. Yeah. He works for the government. And if you look at most states, they elect the attorney general. The yeah, they do. do. Yep. And uh, another thing uh, I noticed, I really appreciate you talking about the Tenth Amendment and the state rights versus the federal government, because I've always been taught that that amendment is to prevent violations of the Constitution, rights of the people, and the states. And I can't imagine these attorneys, when they go to law school, they're not taught about the better rights of the Constitution, each one of them. I don't think they are. I would highly doubt that they, well, even if they are, it's going to be skewed to favor a national government 
I mean, that's pretty yeah. obvious from what we're seeing. Um, Coghill's office did get a hold of me, actually, that guy that you told me about in uh, trying to help him out on a nullification bill for the National Defense Authorization Act, right? Oh, now. man. I want to thank you for helping. That's uh, Jordan Schilling. And yeah. He's working. He wants to make it this, this NDA, a definite detention law. He wants to make it this stronger than key. I don't know if you took a look at Kansas, what they're doing. No. They want to impose 20 year sentence if they're found guilty of kidnapping under this uh, NDAA law. You see, and that, and that I think, is, is the key. On the 10th Amendment Center. Isn't, yeah. that, isn't that really the key? Because if, we, if the states never stand up against the federal government i mean how do you stop somebody from usurping power if if they say if they take power that they don't have and you do nothing to resist it then they've effectively taken the power and this whole issue of, of saying well the constitution guarantees our freedoms or the constitution prevents the government it does no such thing it is a piece of paper it is words on a piece of paper words that most people don't bother to read and when somebody oversteps the line Somebody else needs to stand up and resist and try to prevent the usurpation. Yeah, and ultimately, and I think, Frank, you would agree with that, ultimately it's the people. It's the people's responsibility to demand. I mean, Tammy Wilson's an approachable person. She seems like, whenever I've talked to her, she's a very nice lady. I think she actually listens to people. We need to flood her office with calls or whatever, or when she's here in town, visit with her face-to-face and encourage her to stand up forcibly, and I don't mean by she gets a baseball bat, but with her words, forcibly resist the federal government. And Senator John Coghill, who is, he's got a lot of power, I guess, in the Senate down there. I think he's the head of the Senate, speaker, speaker or whatever, I don't know. We need you know, to call and encourage him to forcibly resist the federal government and not listen. I mean, pass the bill anyways. Who cares what their stupid legal department says? Pass the bill and tell the governor to sign it. Put it on the governor's desk and put it all on him and say, Governor, you're going to do the right thing for your people or the wrong thing? The legislature you know, just, has to force it on the governor. Yeah, I just want to share this uh, uh you mentioned something about the people. You know, Thomas Jefferson, I got my quote in my wall here. The people are the only sure reliance for the preservation of our liberty. Yeah. Thomas Jefferson. And that's what it's going to take. But I'd like to share something before I leave with Daniel Webster. I think I've quoted this before. Hold on, my friends, to the Constitution and to the Republic for which it stands. Miracles do not cluster. And what has happened since in 6,000 years may not happen again. Hold on to the Constitution, for if the American Constitution should fail, it will be anarchy throughout the world. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Thanks, appreciate Frank. that. Now, some of us wouldn't be necessarily opposed to the idea of anarchy throughout the world. Their, um, their view when they wrote that was yeah. different. They were using the first definition where there's just chaos and killing and murder and people going nuts, which... Usually does not happen. Kind of, kind of like what happened in France, right? With democracy, yeah, yeah. ultimate democracy. The um, Aaron and I have discussed this from the point of the Declaration of Independence, from then until there was an actual uh, federal government established, there was no, basically no government. You know, it's interesting. The war started in 1750 or 1755. Whew. The actual fighting started in 1775, and I think in May, was it? I don't remember April. when Lexington, April. Uh-huh. So the, uh, and yet the colonists still did not declare their independence for another year and some odd months, even when they had taken arms against the British. They still were trying to just, that's why I think, was it Jefferson that wrote the, the wrote the necessity of taking up arms against Britain? trying to appeal to the king to stop the war. Stop the war. Let's stop the war. We just want our British rights. They still were, even when they took up arms, they just wanted their British rights. And when they figured out that wasn't going to happen, they said, then we will be and ought to be free and independent states, not a national government. Free and independent states. You said something, Josh, which I want to make sure that we're clarifying. Here, if I can. Okay, yeah. You said several times you used the word force 
when you're talking about using the, the political means that we have right now at our disposal through the state of Alaska, mm-hmm. that the legislature needs to force the issue to the governor, that the governor needs to force the issue to the feds, that, that we need to forcibly stand up against this. Isn't Paul, I mean, that, that really... That's what politics, politics is. Politics is force. Yep. And because at the bottom line of it is that there is actual physical force involved if you pass a law that says that you are going to throw a federal agent in a cage if he attempts to throw one of your citizens in a cage. I mean, that is, I mean, obviously physical force. Yeah. Well, if if um, the state legislature will not do their duty to protect, because we're state... The state is above the federal government, right? So we're all here, and we decided to have a state and a state government, but we've beat ad nauseum the fact that the only reason to have government is to protect property and protect people. So if they do not wish to protect our property, then why do we have them? Why do we have, and David Giesel beat this up a lot too, why do we have the state legislature and a governor if they will not stand up for the people? That's the only reason they're there. Let's just get rid of all the state legislatures no, and just have a national have government Congress. to regulate us, I thought. <laughs> because Isn't we, that why people originally institute government is to regulate themselves? To make sure that, that we don't hurt each other. I, know, I guess it's not. Oh, no, it wasn't what John Locke said. To make said. sure that we don't hurt each other or ourselves. That's why, because you know what, if I didn't have the regulation, I wouldn't know. If they don't want to protect us, let's just get rid of them and have a national government. Let's just get it done. It'd save us a lot of money not having to pay those jokers to be in Juno. Yeah, but I it, mean, basically, it's just a double taxation issue. Is look, though, I mean, and Josh, ipso facto, that's exactly what we have. When no. people are tossing around the supremacy clause and, and when you have state governments climbing over each other to see how quickly they can comply with federal regulations that are written by people who are not elected and who have absolute, I mean, they're basically employees that are coming up with rules for the rest of us to follow. And then our elected officials at every level from the state down to the borough trying to figure out how they can implement these regulations to make sure that we keep paying our fair share. I know. What does the borough always say? Well, the state says we have to. die. Welcome back to Patriots Lament right here on KFAR. It's local talk radio, but we are streaming live around the world at KFAR660.com. Joining us in the studio, as always, from Bighorn Enterprises, we have Josh Bennett and a special guest today. We have Aaron Bennett over there on the other side. Come on. Uh, hey, bring it. All right. I love that song. I'm going to read it. My country, tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride, from every mountainside let freedom ring. My native country, thee, land of noble free, thy name I love. I love the rocks and rills, thy woods and templed hills. My heart with, with rapture thrills like that above. Let music swell the breeze and ring from all the trees, sweet freedom's song. Let mortals' tongue awake, let all the breath partake. Let rocks their silence break, the sound prolong. Our Father God to thee, author of liberty, to thee we sing. Long may our land be bright with freedom's holy light. Protect us by thy might, great God our King. Interestingly enough, that it was the uh, the tune of the British national anthem. God save. God to save the, the king. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And when I uh, listen to that song, I really love the, the uh, I love that not just this version, but the America song. For some reason, I don't think about the federal government or the state government or a borough government as I am listening to such things. That's weird. <laughs> you must not be a good American. No, I'm not. All four of our lines are on hold. Would you like to go back to the phones? No, you know, that song, <laughs> no, I didn't. That song actually, you know, kind of makes some things clear for me. It says that um, God was the author of our liberty, right? Mm-hmm. And God instituted the state, right? <laughs> <laughs> no. No, no. What? We're going to have to go on a Roman state. <clears throat> no, go ahead. Okay. Callers, here we go. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Hi, this is Randy. Randy, go ahead. Hello. Not a first-time caller. No, hey, that was the oh, last time. That was the last hour, Aaron. Come on. He hasn't called for a long time. I just time. wanted to like rest. Hour ago. I haven't been here in a while. Randy, go ahead. Okay. Um, I want to agree with Aaron. We've lost a lot of freedoms in this country, and I agree with the thought that 
a lot of it is due to the greed of wanting to suck up federal dollars willing to uh, send over our freedoms. And one particular example of that is a federal law that they're trying to reenact. In fact, it's going to be voted on this coming Monday on uh, February 11th, the uh, Violence Against Women Act. And, of course, I'm against violence against women. We all are. But this act uh, was the cause, I think, of a state law that is still on the books that says that when there's an incident of domestic violence and the police come, somebody basically has to get arrested. And that was passed in the Alaska state legislature directly due to this 1994 federal law, and uh, it's on the statutes now. And I've never had any experience with uh, domestic violence or anything, but I think that's a perfect example of a loss of freedom when both parties don't want to be hauled don't want either one of them to be hauled away, but yet they haul them away anyway. Such as in the Schaefer Cox case, as you recall, you know, Marty, his wife, did not want Schaefer to be arrested, and but so that's a, a, an example of a loss of freedom. An so, example of the the uh, state, what we've talked about, where the state claims ownership of your life. You don't behave in the way that they decide that you ought to whether society ought to or whatever, they decide they're the ultimate arbitrator, and they say, no, we have decided. Yeah, take it a step farther, Randy. I mean, th- think about why why it is that the state decides that it's right to pick up people and put them in a cage because of something that they did to their own body. Right. I want to go back to his <laughs> yeah. first comment where he said that he agrees with me that we've lost a lot of, uh, what do you say, freedom? Freedom. Um, I don't think I've ever said that. Uh, Didn't you just say it last hour? You said... You recited how Americans think we're so free, but you recited how down on the list we are. Right, but at the, I culminated that whole thing with pointing out the fact that you can't actually lose freedoms. They have to be privileges in the first place. If it's in, unalienable, then how can you lose it? Oh, I see. I, well, I see your point, but they're trying to take away our freedoms. I guess maybe that's a better way to put it. We are surrendering them, Randy. And, 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 and people that get together and decide, you know what, we don't want that freedom to exist anymore. Look at what's happening in New York City right now, where they just passed a law that you can't buy a soda pop. Yeah, right, but the, uh, the, the founders wrote that it's not possible for somebody to give up a right. True. And so if we say that we're losing rights... How is that even possible? Yeah, we retain our liberties at all times. You cannot even agreeably do so. You can't even give permission you to give even, up your you own You can't even give them up. Because it's not even yours to give because it was given by someone mm-hmm. else. Thank you for the, the call, Randy. Authority. Appreciate you. Give me a bump, brother. 458 yeah. dog is the number. The, reminds me of the Nuremberg trials. That's what they decided <laughs> there. Good morning, they? caller. Who's this? Yes. Of course it was. Yeah. Hey, who is this? This is Carl. Carl, go ahead. Well, I grew up learning that uh, Star Spangled Banner was uh, written by someone who was smoking opium, which was common anesthesia, whatever. Anyways, I really wanted to call in about the uh, Korean War veterans. They are the most overlooked from since the Civil War or the Revolutionary War where where people were like, well, they went into service for their country. A lot of them, I think, in the Korean War were drafted. Maybe they volunteered. But it was a meat grinder. People were, were walking up, you know, hills which were nothing but flesh and bones of dead comrades and adversaries. And and you look at Vietnam, you look at Iraq, Iran, whatever is down the line, you know, it's nothing compared to that. That is like total brutality in hell. Yeah, Aaron did a show. They didn't have a draft in the Korean War, did they? Well, most the army was still had quite a few people in it from World War II. I mean, that was pretty close at hand. What four or five years later, six years. years or so. And they the interesting thing is that they drew the line up before we they were fighting the Chinese before they were totally established as uh, you know having a good economy and all that. So they would only arm the first wave of soldiers with firearms, and the rest of the waves behind them were supposed to pick up their guns. So when they, they, as they fell. They were exposed to something peculiar there. The terrain was um, mountainous and openish, 
and they were able to mow down the Chinese like a lawnmower. And if you were a Korean front lineman, you definitely got your share of, if not seeing death or, you know, you got to, you got your share of dealing death, that's for sure. Yeah, waves. Mm-hmm. Wave after wave after wave. I've read lots about that. They just said they were like ants coming off the hill, and they just mow them down. The next wave would come through, and they pick up the dead comrade's rifle and keep running, and they just get a little closer. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing some connections here that that I, I just I want to plug them in for, for a second and see if any of them stick here. What happens to a person who is consistently dealing death, and they see the effects of the people that they're killing. They end up with PTSD and get their gun rights taken? <laughs> uh, well, no, 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 seriously, though, but back in the they Korean War... They can be sensitized. Back in the, in the Korean War, they called it battle fatigue. Right. Before that, they called it shell shock. After battle fatigue, uh, they began to call it, you know, some fancier names. It sounded more like a psychological something that could be treated, maybe with a drug. But the fact of the matter is, is that it, you cannot treat the destruction of the human soul that happens when you are commanding someone to go out and murder in the name of the state. Yeah, you got to be a sick psychopath for it not to warp on you. It, exactly. And, so, and you know, maybe we don't have the, the same kind of, you know, somebody's hand sticking to their sword because they have been in battle hacking bodies so long, that kind of effect on people. But we certainly have, uh, eventually you push enough buttons and you realize, yeah, I'm, every time I push a button I'm killing people. You know, eventually it does catch up with you. You know, you, you look. Our warfare is drastically different now. Yeah, you can only say that it's, the, the drone strikes and everything. You can only say that it's it's not wrong because they're brown for so long. Well, and a, especially in a country. I don't know. That, we've been saying that a long time. The China, the Oriental people are a little bit on the brown side. Yeah, we've mowed them. They're they're actually technically yellow, according to the textbook, by the way, that was being taught by uh, Scopes. Remember the Scopes trial? The Clarence Darrow and William Jennings Bryan and the whole monkey trial. Huh. Remember that? That that same textbook that everybody was so, you know, that the ACLU defended his use of? The very next page from what is displayed at the museum there uh, in, uh, where is it, Indiana, wherever, wherever the trial was, the very next page right there in that same textbook says that the evolution of man shows very clearly that there are inferior races, and then it lists them, the, the, the Negro, the Asian, and then, of course, the, at the very top, the most advanced race, according to the very textbook that the ACLU Don't defended. Don't tell me it was a nor- the, Yes, exactly. The, the Caucasian the or nor- white, the northern, white the, northern, the northern European and Americans. Exactly. So, I, I mean, if you, if you think about... Scandic people. Yeah. Yeah, good stuff. All right. Thanks for the call. 458-TALK is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Hello, this is Chris. Chris? Yeah, yeah, you hear me? Yes, yeah. go ahead. Hey, I'm a first-time caller. I'll keep it pretty quick. I awesome. know you guys are getting towards the end of your show. But uh, I was just, uh, first off, I hope you guys are getting some support from our local businesses. Um, it's, I think it's real important for uh, kind of younger people to to get uh, turned on to what's going on in the country and uh, interested in freedom and what this country is all about, you know? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so I hope so because they really should be supporting you guys. Um, and also about the whole uh, the whole state feds thing with the laws. Um, first off, is do you, do you guys know anything about uh, some kind of some kind of meeting or uh, some kind of uh, uh, some ki- kind of case in Anchorage where they are uh, debating whether who has last day the state or the feds? I've not heard that. I, I I just heard it. I'm not sure if uh, I'm, I'm not too certain on that. And uh, also, they could ask was, me. I'd have a pretty strong opinion about it. But <laughs> well, what what would that be? I mean, I think I have an idea. But the state. It, it, and that's uh, that's what you're saying should be, or that's what you're saying is. No, I don't think that it is uh, based uh-huh. off what I see. But I think it ought to be the state based, based on, on history yeah. and based on the documents that were signed, based on the Declaration of Independence, the Confederacy, and the uh, Constitution, and the writings of the Founding Fathers, the states are the ultimate authority over the federal government. There well, is the, no the con- way con- you can convolute it otherwise. The contract that was made between the states when they created the federal government. Right. Yeah. 
The uh, the worst Federalist of them all, the guy that wanted to have a national government, which was Alexander Hamilton. He was terrible. He wanted to have a king. He wanted to have a national bank, the whole thing. He was the worst of all of them. And even he said the states have ultimate authority over the federal government. And he even said the uh, supremacy clause only meant if... The, the Congress was passing laws in pursuance of the Constitution. Otherwise, he said the states have no obligation, in fact, had a duty to resist such laws. And he was the worst Federalist of all. So even if the worst of them is saying what we're saying, then I would say the radicals like Madison and Jefferson and, and uh, Henry, they would even go even further. But, I mean, even the worst of them all agrees with our point so if we go with original intent obviously the states are supreme and the people thereof are supreme over the states do you think that's why Aaron Burr shot him I Hmm. thought that was hmm. it's interesting because if you look at what happened to Aaron Burr though further down I mean he went down and tried to start another country didn't he I have Aaron Burr's uh, biography at my house it's called Fallen Founder yeah that's exactly why he shot him. They wrote letters back, and they would bash each other for their positions. Um, Aaron Burr was more uh, in line with Jefferson and guys like that. And they would bash each other publicly, and it culminated in them shooting at each other. And Hamilton going down. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It just seems that as far as uh, protecting the citizens, like the our state reps, they're happy with just kind of placating us with words like as far as like the gun um the gun control debate words like um you know i uh i urge uh washington not right. to, mm-hmm. you know it's like well, when since when has that worked to say oh hey uh yeah if, if you could uh could you not uh change our laws you know <laughs> that's a really good point i love it when they say we urge in the strongest possible terms yeah, Blah, yeah. like what do you understand what we're saying Basically, when we are asking if the state government won't do their job and protect us from a radical, no, I'm not going to give them that word, a usurped uh, federal government who's usurped their power, then what good is it even to have a state government? Why should we even pay the money to have them? They're they're there for when they want to enforce their own laws for for their benefit, such as the DUI laws. Right, we're uh, getting double dip. And the texting laws, yeah, we're getting double tax, basically. Triple, triple if you went and you add in the borough. So this government of checks and balances Quadruple became a government of triple uh, oppression. Yeah. You know, and this is my simple opinion that, even though I wouldn't vote for him, if a governor would stand up and say, actually have some cojones and be a man and say, you know what, I was sent here for this reason. I am a quote-unquote constitutionalist. I am going to not only follow but uphold the Constitution, and the rights of my people. He could basically be a full-time governor for the rest of his life if he wished it, because the people, I feel, would stand (laughs) behind him 100% and say, thank you. Now, he might have to do a little bit of education to the people, but he could get it done, and he would be held up and esteemed. Like, look at this guy. He could be a Jefferson. And one of the things that our caller pointed out here in terms of why they are debating down there in Juneau even whether or not they can tell the the feds what to do, it it, it belies the point that right now we have laws on the books here in Alaska that kind of prevent kidnapping. You know, it's kind of illegal right now to go and take somebody off the street. You could use that very law. You don't have to pass a new one. You could just go out and arrest anybody who committed an act of aggression against an, an Alaskan, even if that person were a federal agent, Look, even in the Schaefer Cox case, the state dropped all the charges because the information was gathered illegally. And the federal government said, well, we don't need warrants. The state had the obligation then to say, let them go. Yeah. You will get out of here. Let them go. The state had the obligation to do that, and they failed. Whether we want to say, well, you know, they had some stuff on them, it doesn't matter. What was right was not done. They should have made them let them go. Instead, they kept them in our own state prisons. That was totally wrong. When the state government decided that their rights were violated, done. The state abrogated their their 
responsibility to protect its own citizens. So why do we have a state government? Exactly. Hey, we, the call. And you know what? They don't need to pass a law. They have the right without it because they were given the right by the founders themselves. They didn't say, well, if you pass a law and it has certain language in it, then then you can nullify these things. They said you have the right and not only that, the duty. Declaration of Independence. Right. And the, the duty to throw to protect, you off. Isn't the whole point to protect the people? How would why wouldn't they have the duty? To, why and uh, yeah, why would we want a government? Did we did the people create a government to say, let us get together to get a taxing and regulating authority over us? No, they said let us come together and provide a society and create a state that will protect us from the wiles and the woolies of whatever comes against us. Yeah, man, I wish. Four five eight talk is a number. I wish I could talk to that attorney general. Good morning, Colin. Well, at least Aaron talked to him. Yeah, right. Morning, this is Billy. Yeah, hey, Billy, what's on your mind? Well, um, before your show came on, of course, was the last hour of Glenn Beck, so I listened to maybe the last fifteen minutes of that, so I wouldn't miss yours. I'm sorry, man. Are you all right? <laughs> you know, I know. Did you have yeah. to detoxify yourself afterwards? <laughs> well, I'd like to come against the ideas he was spouting that I hear not only from him but from all kinds of other people as well. And the idea is that if they would just leave us alone, we would leave them alone. <laughs> the idea that I don't care what you do in your bedroom, for example. This doesn't work. Uh, if you read Proverbs, I think it's 29 and 27, it says the unjust is an abomination to the just, and the just is an abomination to the wicked. Now all you ought to do is just replace some words, you see. The, the sodomite is an abomination to a Christian. The witches are an abomination to a Christian. But the Christians are also an abomination to the sodomites. The and, Christians are an abomination to the wicked. And they what, 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 was, what was Sodom and Gomorrah's sin? Well, yeah, yeah. I, I, know, I know what you say about that, and that's cool and all. That's not my point. I'm talking, you can say that about witchcraft. In other words, witchcraft was always illegal in this country. That's why we had the witchcraft trials. Even to this day, you can't sacrifice animals to Satan in, in a public worship service. It's not allowed. See what I'm saying? Yeah, and it is Proverbs 29, 20, verse 27. An unjust man okay. is so the an point abomination is, though, to the righteous. If you allow homosexuality in your country and you allow it to coexist, they are going to forcibly kidnap and rape Christians eventually, when they get the power. Just like, just like I'm sorry if people don't like it, but the Catholic Church would, in, would reinstitute the Inquisition if it had the power. All you got to do is go to those countries where Catholicism really still has a hold, and you'll see the old widow women walking on their hands and knees 20 miles to kiss the statue because their priest told them to. That still happens. And they still go for Christians when they get a chance to. The Christians are an abomination to the wicked. Therefore, you have to either excise the wicked from your Christian society, or it gets so bad, like it did when the Puritans were in England, and the abominations of England got to the point where they said, we've got to get out of here. You either have to fight or flight. That's the way it is. You can't sit here and say, we'll coexist with the sinners, the wicked, if the wicked will coexist with us, because they will always lie and say, of course, we'll coexist with you. Let us have gay marriage. Let us have gays and the Boy Scouts. We won't touch your kids. Don't worry. There's a difference between a homosexual and a pedophilia. That's a bunch of crap. They're just perverts. And perverts are an abomination to Christians. And Christians are an abomination to perverts. And if you don't know which one you are, I do. <laughs> No, Billy, uh, yeah, uh, historically speaking, how does it normally work out for Christians who f just choose to fight instead of flee? Well, it depends. If they decide to use the weapons of the world's warfare, they're defeated and slaughtered. If they have learned the secret of true power, then they'll learn to overcome evil with good. But there's not many people who ever want to learn that particular magic. Well, I hope I'm here next week. I'd like to uh, address the Protestant movement and its uh, correlation with creating the modern state and actually bringing the downfall where we are right now. 
Good call. Thank you very much, Joe Billy. We've got about uh, two minutes left here. Four, five, eight. Talk is the Let's number. See if we can make it snappy. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Good morning. Hey, is this Cecily? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I'm getting good at that one. Because um, the men wanted to make the AMA, and they killed all the healers of the time because they were women, and they could they gave it away for free. But in any case, that uh, what, not what I called. I was so. I hope Georgio calls back again. I always love hearing him. He's he's beautiful to listen to, and uh, and the other thing is, is do does the permanent fun people do they got stock in penitentiary? Uh, you know, because that's a they got there's a stock for for uh, for people to buy into to incarcerate people, so you can make a lot of money on jailing people. In any case, I was wondering if if Alaska Permanent Fund was dabbling in that stock too. I wouldn't doubt it. The incarceration business is doing well. <laughs> yeah, especially in this country. In any case. A lot of times, I don't know, when somebody screams about something that they're really, really against, it's sometimes they are guilty of the same. You see one finger point out and three fingers point back, just, uh, in, just in case anybody noticed. <laughs> anyway, so, so my we're all now looking at our hands and trying to figure out what you're pointing. Five, I point all five. And just put <laughs> your <laughs> hand out there. It's on you! <laughs> Right. Thank, thanks, Ashley. One, one last call. Good morning. All right, they didn't hold. Josh, we are at the end of the program. Uh, quickly, contact information. PatriotsLament at gmail.com and PatriotsLament.blogspot.com is the website. And someone left a message on my phone. I've been in Prudhoe, so I'll try to get back to people's emails and stuff as soon as I can. All right. But appreciate all the new calls and the old calls and... Everyone. Action point for today. Uh, just something I was Glad thinking about. Back. If if you saw a sign in a business that said, "We listen to Patriots Lament on KFAR," would you give that business more business? I would. And just just uh, just a. Uh, I mean, obviously we don't have the the funds here to go out and print those kind of placards. But maybe if a business is listening to KFAR, we were giving out bumper stickers, and I saw quite a few, which was pretty cool. If they'd like people to know that they listen to KFAR, maybe they can or listen to Patriots Lament. Maybe they can uh, put a sign in their window and see if that does anything for their business. Hmm. Good or bad, I'd like to know. <laughs> All right, thanks, folks. We'll see you thanks, next guys. week right here on KFAR. Up next, it's Health Talk. And I personally will be back here in the studio on Monday morning for the Better Breakfast Show. Any comments you have for us, you can send them to us at our email link right there on the website, kfar660.com. Have a great Saturday, and try not to get yourself in the police blotter. <laughs>